Bertina Nyenti. I'm a family life and relationship coach. We talk about family, we talk about marriage, we talk about dating on this channel. So if you are new on this channel, I want to say welcome. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell thing. That way you will be notified of any new video that is posted. And if you are a returning subscriber, I want to say welcome and let's jump into this. So today we're going to be talking about coping mechanism uh, after, before and after divorce. Because sometimes, uh, you know, divorce is similar to um, grief. It's, it's like a grief process. And you have to have some tips to go through this thing because you're going to, there's a lot of pain, you know, frustration and everything going on. So it's very necessary to have some tips that will help you to navigate through the um through the process so i have like uh, how many i have like eight uh, different tips to help you with the whole process okay first of all don't be too hard on yourself because a lot of times people feel embarrassed they feel ashamed they they have regrets you know they know what people will say and all that stuff it takes two to make a relationship work if one person is going to the, uh, learning everything, you know, reading all the books, listening to the podcast, going to all the seminars, and the other person is not doing it, it's not going to be helpful to the marriage. Marriage is two people who are intentional about working on the marriage. It's not just one person. So you don't have to feel uh, regretful. You don't have to be embarrassed. And you don't have to be ashamed of what people will say. You know, it, it happens. So you have to move on and you know for the for the betterment of yourself you know your well-being so then find a support system because sometimes people don't really feel comfortable talking with their family members because maybe your family members have warned you and you wanted to give it a try and you know it didn't work so find a support system you know a group where you guys can go for dinner together you know, you guys can go to games, movies, and do some different things together. And those people, because they have already gone through the same situation, they will understand or have a deeper understanding on how you feel about the, you know. So then you guys will have to brainstorm and network and do whatever you can do to make, you know, to come to a place of healing. All right. So the next one is uh, self-care. You want to, it's very crucial, okay? You want to do the things that you enjoy doing. Maybe during the marriage, you couldn't do a lot of things that you enjoy doing. So now is the time that you are free, you are all by yourself. It's time to take it to yourself. Pamper yourself. If you love traveling, travel girl or guy, go around the world, do whatever you want to do. Do your nails, you know, make yourself feel good. If you have to get into the gym again, Get into the gym, you know, if you love walking, you love reading, whatever the interest, whatever, whatever interest you have, go to Starbucks, you know, network with people, connect with other people. You guys can talk about things that interest you and all that stuff. So take care of yourself. It's very, very, very important. That will help you emotionally and physically. All right. So <clears throat> self-reflect, you know, sit down and talk to yourself. How did I contribute to this? Well, how can I do, how can I make it different? How can I do it differently? You know, you have to sit down because a lot of times it takes two. Like I said, it takes two to tango. Maybe the other person might not be the only problem. You, you contributed to the problem too. So it's very important to sit down and, 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 and talk to yourself. You know, what did you do? Or oh, you also want to free yourself. Are you holding grudges against this person? Are you being resentful? You know, are you having hate? You want to release yourself because you cannot be free if you are having grudges and be resentful against another human being. The Bible says we should be at peace with all men, no matter the situation. So you have to try and go through that. If you're having, you know, with some resentment and some hate and grudges, you have to release yourself. Do whatever it takes, okay? And excuse me, if what comes with this person, because what good is it going to do you now by you fighting, okay? It's not going to do you any good. So what's the point? Your main focus here is how, especially if you guys have kids, is how to, you know, 
how to to, to it's it's this is time for the kids you know how to focus on the kids well-being it's not about you guys anymore if you guys are co-parenting you have to fight hard to get that to have that cordial relationship i'm telling you i have dealt with some difficult people before and it's crazy you know some people are very difficult to move on they want to fight to the end they want to make this other person life miserable and they don't want to come to a place of compromise and that is not good if you're still very tough and that it means that you haven't got, you haven't moved on yet. So if you somebody has to be the bigger one, if you are the bigger one, you have to walk away from most of the fights, okay? Because I'm telling you, <laughs> you're gonna meet this person. Um, divorce is is more you know painful than death because you guys are gonna meet every time. You're gonna meet them at schools, at the school, the kids' school, even when the adult graduate college graduation the weddings <laughs> i mean like any major event that is happening in that child's life you guys gonna meet there so it's always important to have that cordial um relationship and again of course it's not it's not it's not it's not a, it's not it's not a good thing to fight after a divorce especially like i said when kids are involved those kids are all going through trauma come on now they, they were staying with mommy and daddy. They ate dinner together. They went places together. And there's no more. They, 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 they're not mommy and daddy cannot be under the same roof with them anymore. That causes them enough trauma. So the only thing you guys can do now is to co-parent in a very mature way. Okay? Instead of causing more trauma for those kids. That's why most of the kids go astray. Because they get frustrated. They don't know how to ease the pain, the goals for love or attention from the wrong crowd. And they start to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's very important for the sake of the kids. You guys are adults. If you decide not to be together anymore, it's okay. But be let's be in peace for the sake of the children. Okay? Let's be in peace for the sake of these children, not causing more trauma than what they are experiencing right now. Very, very important. So you have to walk away. If this person is constantly bringing fights, you have to walk away and take a deep breath and revisit the situation. Maybe on the later during that day or maybe a couple of days later. Okay? It's not, fighting is not, no, it's not necessary. All right? And then the next one is number six. You have to be completely healed. Some people, they try to prove a point. Oh, yes, you know, I can find another woman. It's not too hard for me. Or I can find another guy. You know, no, that's not the right approach to do that. If you get just had a divorce, you have to heal yourself. Go through everything you can because your mental health is very important. Okay? You have to manage your mental health very well. You cannot just jump from one relationship to another. It's not going to be fair to you and the other person because you're going to take that baggage into that new relationship. And then you're going to not end up being there and it's like a visual cycle. You're going to keep moving from one relationship to another. So for your own benefits, heal yourself, you know, get some healing, and then you can move on to another relationship. No matter how long it takes, because some people, it takes a longer time. Some people, they move on very easily. Okay, so you have to take care of yourself. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. Okay? You don't have to prove anything, honey. All right, so number seven, um, get a divorce coach or um, a counselor. Because sometimes this thing gets very overwhelming, you know, and it messes with your mental health. So you need extra help. You cannot do it all by yourself. I know after the lawyer don't do too much. You know, they had a mediator there and then everybody goes a separate way. You have to do some things by yourself. So that's when you, a coach will come in or a counselor to help you, have to, to, you know, help you with the process in navigating through this whole ordeal. So it's very important that you have a uh, seek a coach or a counselor in the process to help you. Okay. And number eight, don't forget to pray. Okay. If you're a Christian, you are a believer. Pray. Read the Bible. The word of God will not go back forward to him. When you read the word of God, you equip yourself. It's like food. 
you know, you can strengthen your, you, you find hope, you know, you can go on Google and text, um, scriptures for, uh, uh, for grief or divorce and all that stuff to go into the divorce after divorce. You're going to find scriptures there that are going to help you to feed your soul. So you cannot think about all those bad things. You can feel sorry for yourself. You cannot start to live in regret. You know, and all, the, all those things are not healthy for you. Stress gives you a lot of illnesses, okay? According to studies, stress gives you, I think, high blood pressure, diabetes, and all those things. So you want to take care of yourself. Now this person is gone, is you have to take care of yourself. You cannot kill yourself for another human being who is not willing to... <laughs> To be with you, okay? You somebody out there will, is gonna take you, it's gonna honor you, it's gonna cherish you. But you take care of you. You take care of you. Do not sit there and feel sorry for yourself like the whole war has ended because this person left your life. It's not that important. Okay? It's okay to grieve because maybe you spend a couple of years with this person and it just you know, left. A lot of people that get divorced, it, they love to not go away. But it's just because of the characteristics, the behavioral problems, patterns. That's why they had to separate. But a lot of people who got divorced, the love is still there because it was developed. So it doesn't go away easily. So I totally understand, but you just have to take care of you now because it's not anymore. Okay? If you guys want to come together, because I've seen people who had got divorced, <laughs> And they came back and remarried, you know, if you got, but you have to take care of you. All right? So pray and ask God to help you through the healing process if you're a believer. All right? So if you are uh, if you are going through similar situations or you know somebody who is going through a divorce and they cannot find, they don't, because some people, they don't have any support system. They don't have anybody to talk to. They don't even listen to, you know, YouTube and all that stuff. You can always tell them about me or, you know, refer them to somebody else. But if you want to reach me, it's Kingdom Relationship at Gmail. Kingdom Relationship Coaching at Gmail.com. You can always send me, um, 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 you know, an email. I'm going to link the, my email down after this, um, in this video. Okay? So, I love you and I'm going to be here very often bringing more family coaching relationship, marriage, and dating, okay? I love you all and thank you for watching.